Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here, tracking our storm system for tonight and Saturday. There's some good news, bad news. It's still going to rain, um, but the good news is the severe weather risk is definitely shifting south, but it's not completely out of the woods. And folks in South Carolina, there's still the risk we're going to have to watch. So let's get right to it. It really is going to depend on where you are today. What's interesting watching the satellite radar loop this morning is what's occurring to our southwest. You can see most of the heavier storms are staying down in this area right now. And if you look closely uh, on the surface, there's a depicted backdoor cold front. A backdoor cold front is a front that comes in kind of from the back door, the different direction. Typically, cold fronts come in this way. This one's coming in from the northeast. It's all because of high pressure up here. Clockwise flow around high pressure, remember, pushes in that northeast wind. It wedges up against the mountains, and we start to see cool air kind of pool or get trapped. We call that the wedge or cold air damming. Now, as the moisture moves in, it will enhance this, and that's going to be key to what type of severe threat, if any, we see on Saturday. And right now, it looks like very little to none, and I'll show you why here in a minute. Let me turn everything off here. We'll turn off the satellite, the radar, and we'll turn on today's severe weather outlook just so we have an idea on where everything is. You see, obviously, where the thunderstorms are ongoing. This is trimmed down to the Gulf Coast, and then tomorrow, that risk shifts to the east. If you notice a little bit, the medium risk has been shifted south, and so has the marginal risk or the low risk. So the low and the medium risk are slowly shifting south. So there's still some what we call conditional um, uncertainty here, uh, meaning basically here there's big question marks on the warm front. If the warm front stays down here, like where we think it is, that's where severe weather will be prevalent. Um, it could even be further south than that, but there is still an outside chance it swings up here, and then we see more severe weather. But I'm telling you right now that that threat is looking pretty minor as of this vlog. So let's get into the details. But before we get too deep in the details, let's talk about the heavy rain threat. Showed you the severe weather risk. This is the heavy rain threat. The red is the higher risk. That's a 15% chance of seeing flash flooding. On um, the 10 to 15% chance is yellow. And then the green is the 5% chance, 5 to 10% chance. So you can see, yeah, there's a chance we're going to see some flash flooding tonight to our southwest. Tomorrow, that risk is shifting off to the east. So there's still the risk for flash flooding. It's just that the severe weather risk is trending down a little bit, except for a few areas. So let's get into those details now. Straight up on Futurecast here. So let's go through time. Today, cloudy, drizzly, misty. Not a great day, but not a lot of rain either. The rain really holds off till tonight. And you can see we'll get to about 4 o'clock and maybe the first little batch of light rain moves in, which is key, by the way, because the first batch of light rain, remember, we have that backdoor front. I, I showed you earlier that backdoor front is here, supplying northeast winds. As this moisture rides up and over, it falls into that cool air and actually makes the surface layer cooler. So it enhances it, actually helps the CAD or the wedge get stronger. So the first batches of rain are kind of key, and it continues into the overnight. We start to see more of that. And also notice where the big storms are to the south. This is also an important factor in the forecast for tomorrow. These big storms down here actually end up blocking or absorbing most of the inflow and eating up. There's still going to be rain up here, but what this does is these storms down here actually absorb most of the energy, in this case the low-level fuel, and reduce the amount of transport of fuel or you know moisture to the north. And that can reduce some of the rainfall totals and the severity of the weather we see further north so we'll go through 10 p.m tonight the rain is moving in it's pretty heavy by midnight i expect it to be coming down so after sunset tonight get ready for rain uh, into the wee hours of the morning it's raining pretty good but where the severe weather threat is ongoing is down here and it's pretty clear to see this is the area we're watching right now and that's probably right where the warm front is somewhere in there up here it's still pretty cool we'll go through time we'll go through the morning hours yeah tomorrow morning you wake up it's going to be pouring um rain in many locations we get to about 8 a.m and the storms start to shift off to the south now where is the warm front because the cold front is still back to the west so this is the key part the cold front is still back here but there's some kind of low little meso low here there's a warm front in here so we're probably wedged in with cold air here which keeps us stable and just gives us a misty drizzly kind of light rain day as we go into the afternoon because the warm air can't get up here by the time the cold front gets here at like four o'clock in the afternoon there's no fuel for it it's running into stable air and so nothing happens and a lot of the guidance is showing this now so and again i'm not saying it's not going to be raining in the afternoon it's probably going to be mist or drizzle it's definitely not going to be downpours um but the severe weather risk 
really looks like it stays to our south. And we can look at a couple things that kind of reiterate this. And again, this is the latest rapid refresh. So we're getting the absolute latest data. So if we look at the low level or uh, thunderstorm fuel, you hear us talk about that often. I'll load this real quickly. Um, it'll take uh, we're late letting this, this load up here. So let me back up just a second here. So I'm going to go, this is today, um, not much thunderstorm fuel. And the brighter the colors, the more thunderstorm fuel there is. We'll go to 10 a.m. tomorrow. You can actually see the wedge, okay, or the cold air damming. It, it's really evident because you see the sharp line of basically thunderstorm fuel to nothing right here, right? So the air is super stable in that area. And that, that's really depicting. And you see that the, the wedge tries to shrink. By 1 o'clock tomorrow, the closest the Cape gets is up here in the Midlands of South Carolina. So if there's going to be some severe weather tomorrow, these are the areas you need to watch out for. Obviously, anywhere along the coast, but from the Midlands, the Columbia area, Orangeburg, down to Charleston, to the Grand Strand, out towards um, the Petey R River area, um, and then out towards Cape Fear area, as well as the Brunswick Islands. Those areas out in there, that's the area we're, we're talking about. You can see it tries to sneak up towards Lumberton which is something interesting, the I-95 corridor, but it just, by the time the front gets here, it, it's pretty much done. So that that's a that's a good sign for no severe weather in North Carolina, but South Carolina, basically anywhere south of 20 and then over to, 90, uh, over to 95, so Interstate 20 South, that's the area I'll be watching. Let's quickly look at the thunderstorm um, parameter that we often show you called... Um, Significant tornado parameter. I'll move this over just a little bit so you guys can see it. Significant tornado parameter, same time frame here, same model, by the way. Um, you see some of that fuel tomorrow right there. Look down here. You see coming up through the area I just highlighted from Columbia down to Orangeburg, Charleston, towards the PD region, and then eventually Cape Fear. So, yeah, there's a little uptick in STP or significant tornado parameter, but that's it. It doesn't make it far inland. That's a pretty big change yesterday because it was much further north. So, there's strong indications that that is all going to stay off to the south of us and kind of miss. So that that's a good sign. Now, the other thing we got to look at is temperatures real quickly, just to show you how the CAD or the or how this whole thing is going to unfold. So another great parameter to look at is to show you how strong this cold air damming or wedge is and how it can protect us. As we'll go through today and see, yeah, temperatures here, and I'll quickly highlight some of these. It might get in the 60s here. I, I doubt that. We're already not there, so I'm a little questioning even if we're going to get that far into the 60s. But we'll go through time and watch the cold air. Look over here. Watch this cold air coming in. This is this is the backdoor front. You see the northeast winds pushing in this cooler, drier air coming in from the northeast from the Delmarva Peninsula. So it's really interesting. You'll watch this progress into the Piedmont and then back towards the mountains through time as we go into tonight. So look at the cold air come in. You see the blues. Okay, you can. I'm going to stop this at 7 a.m. tomorrow. We can see the warm front right here. It's really easy to see where it is because that's where temperatures are much milder. And notice it comes up a little bit to Columbia, but not much further than that. It's right in here. The cold front is back in here. So you get the reverse wedge. You get warm air on one side of the mountains. And so this is our CAD or our wedge. We'll just call it the wedge right there, right? Set up. Let's go through time. You can see it kind of holds on. You know, tomorrow I'll, I'll put some temperatures here. I mean, it's only, this is 9 a.m., it's in the 50s, it's 40s north, Columbia's in the 60s, and then you got close to 70 down to the south. We'll go through time here. Let me delete those. We'll go into the afternoon hours. I'm going to stop this at maybe 3 o'clock. So let's again look at the temperatures. Only in the 50s back here, right? You get to Florence, you're in the 70s. So this is why severe weather is possible down in these areas, because the weather's warm. Back here, pretty stable. So... That's a real good indication of just what the wedge is going to do. And it kind of holds on in through the evening hours. By the time it tries to warm up the cold fronts here, it overtakes it. So, yeah, there's a little bit of a crossover where there might be a chance there. But I'll tell you, overall, this is a good sign. So it's not we're not out of the woods yet. I'm not going to tell you that. But one thing I will tell you, um, we are probably going to see a lower severe weather risk with heavy rain tomorrow. But something to still monitor, of course, updates coming tonight and tomorrow based on where that warm front is will be key. So still pay attention to the weather tomorrow because... If you if you feel or see or sense the temperature going up, that's that that's for that's that's telling your mind, hey, pay attention. We could see some strong storms. We'll have the updates obviously today at four, five, six, and eleven on NBC Charlotte and WCNC.